Today, I'm going to show you how to do a quick and easy text reveal in Premiere, like this one. Three, two, one. And welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for today's bonus filmmaking tip. Okay, so you want to take your videos up a notch and do something more interesting with your text. More interesting than just, say, bringing it on screen with a fade. Like, maybe you want your text to come on like this. The good news is a text reveal like this one is super easy to do in Adobe Premiere. So let's dive in. First, let's open Premiere. I'm in version 15.2, so yours may look slightly different if you have an older or newer version. Okay, so I have my clip of this woman walking here, and I want to reveal the text as she walks from right to left. So I'm going to put my clip on video layer 1 and type my text on layer 2. I use the keyboard shortcut T to bring up the text tool. And I choose my font and font size over here in the effect control tab. There we go. Next, I'm going to shorten the text clip so that it starts right where I want to start the reveal. Then I'm going to go over to the effect controls tab again and find the text tab and make sure it's expanded. And then we'll take this little pen tool here to draw a mask around the text, which we'll animate with keyframes in a minute. So I'm going to do a very basic four point mask. And as you can see here in the effect control tab, we now have a mask one tab. So what I'm going to do now is to create my first keyframe in the mask path tab. Because once I create the first keyframe, Premiere will automatically create new keyframes for you every time you move your playhead and your mask. So to do this, you click the little clock here to the left of the words mask path to set the first keyframe. And you can see we now have a little keyframe here. Then I actually click on the words mask to highlight the mask, which you can now see is highlighted in the program monitor. And then I'm going to adjust my mask every few frames. And when I do so, it will automatically create new keyframes in the Effect Controls tab. So to get a little more precise here, I'm going to zoom in on my image in the Program Monitor to 150% by selecting 150 in the lower left corner. And then I'll use these sliders to center the woman so I can see what I'm doing. And while we're up this close, you can now see that the default mask here has a little feather on it. A feather is basically a soft edge. If we go over to the Effect Controls tab, we can see that the feather is 10. And I'll leave it there because a slight feather will make it so there's a nice soft edge to my mask. And any imperfections in the area where the text meets the woman won't be as obvious. Okay, so let's start animating. So the process is going to be move your playhead ahead a few frames and then adjust your mask. Then move the playhead, then adjust your mask again. So here's the playhead here at the bottom of the program tab, which I'll move a tiny bit. Then I'm going to go up and adjust my mask corner points so that the text constantly cuts off right where the woman's back is. So it looks like it's coming out from behind her. Also, when you adjust these points, be careful not to grab these little dots next to the corner points or you'll get some bending in your mask, like this. Unless, of course, you want a little bend in there. So I'm going to continue to keep moving the playhead at the bottom of the program monitor and adjusting the mask until I reach the end of the text clip. And you can see that all these new keyframes have been created here in the Effect Controls tab. And I'm just going to keep going until I reach the end. Now, you can of course go in and adjust any of the keyframes if you see some sloppy parts once you play it down, or you can even add more keyframes after the fact. And if you don't like how it turned out and you want to do the whole thing over again, you can select your mask and hit delete on your keyboard and the whole thing goes away. And now that I've reached the end, if I play it down, we have a nice little text reveal. So basically, that's it. Much more interesting than a fade, no? Okay, folks, let's do that quick tip. 
Now that you've worked for hours keyframing all that text, you want to make sure you don't lose all that work if your drive conks out. That means making a copy of your hard drive. And it also means backing up your Premiere project file on a location other than your drive or your computer at the end of every session. To do this, simply make a copy of the Premiere project file, which ends in PRPROJ, and throw it on your cloud service of choice iCloud, Dropbox, or you can even email it to yourself if it's small enough. And then, if your drive ever goes bad, it'll be that much easier to rebuild your work. So, back up your drive. And don't forget to back up your project file at the end of every session. Then, you won't be totally out of luck if your drive bites the dust. Alrighty friends, comment below and let me know if there are any other Premiere tutorials you'd like to see me make. And if you like this one, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time. Oh, 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 oh,